Hello and welcome to Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So for this video I thought I would glaze the mug that I made in a previous video. And when I glaze my mugs I tend to use layered glazes. Now in my studio I use a lot of commercial brush-on glazes, so the pre-mixed ones. Um, and with my mugs I like to layer them up and try and get some different effects with them. So this is a mug I've done previously. Um, and you can see how I've layered the glazes down the side of the mug. So I thought for this video, I would do the same for the mug that I made. Now, I'm going to show you the glazes that I've picked. Um, I'm going to do some very different colours to this one. Um, and then um, I'll run through um, a few tips and um, things that have, are reasons why I've chosen those particular glazes. So I hope you find it helpful and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so these are the glazes that I've picked for this mug. So I actually started with the dark glaze this end, which is um, a terracolor blue. Um, it comes out a lovely dark blue, but with lighter blue areas in it and a mottle. It's a beautiful glaze. Um, and I have, I've only recently got this in the studio, so I thought I would use this as the base for my mug. Um, I then thought I would like it to graduate up in colour and a good um, contrasting complementary colour for that blue was the orange from the Terracolors as well. Um, it's that orange there. Um, now to get it to go from the blue um, up to the orange, I thought I would then use um, Smoking Merlot because this has a base color that's kind of like a burgundy red but then has purple in it as well. Again, a lovely glaze. And um, I also like this blue hydrangea glaze, which it's a bit deceptive on this test tile, but what it does have um, is a lot of little crystals in it that give you a kind of speckle effect and because it's so transparent when it's thinner, if you put the crystals down over the surface of whatever glaze you're using, it just gives you the kind of speckled starry look of the glaze. It's what I've used on this mug, on this layer here, to give the speckly look. It actually has two colours of speckles, so there's, there's kind of like a limey green, and a white in there, um, which to match those speckles, I've then gone with cactus, um, which is here, which is a very similar kind of green to those speckles. And again, a beautiful glaze. And then for the inside of the mug, I wanted to go back to the kind of blues, but thought it'd be nice to have a pale colour on the inside of the mug so you can see what you're drinking. So for this one I've gone with Blue Oyster um, and this is it's kind of a satin matte um, colour and again it's it's a bit of a grey paley blue colour um, with a mottle in it and it breaks, you can see it breaks over texture, but there's no texture on the inside of my mug. So those are the set of glazes that I've gone with. Now, things I've considered when I've been picking those glazes is how runny the glazes are. So how likely they are to actually blend with each other. If a glaze isn't that fluid when it's fired, then it's less likely, much less likely, to blend with other glazes. It'll stay put, so you'll end up with stripes rather than a blend down the mug. And then, of course, the other thing to think about is whether they're food safe or dinnerware safe. Um, because this is a mug and it's going to be used 
um, for drinking, then you need to make sure that all of your glazes are food safe or dinnerware safe. Um, the outside of the mug doesn't matter quite as much, um, except for the top section where you're drinking, because that's obviously where your lips are going to go. And obviously the inside's where the hot water is going to be. So you can get away with a bit of um, decoration on the outside. Just pay particular attention to the inside and that section where you're going to drink from. So I'm going to start with the inside of my mug. So I'm going to start with the blue oyster. And I am going to paint. Uh, the pot says apply two to three coats. Um, my tile um, is three coats, so I'm going to go with three coats. Whenever you're using brush on glazes, do make sure you let it dry between the coats. Some glazes, um, you need to be very careful with your brush strokes to make sure they're nice and even. Other glazes are a lot more forgiving. And the glazes that I'm using here are pretty forgiving because they are very fluid. So they melt and they even themselves out. So I don't have to worry too much about being too neat. see that that dries really quickly for the first coat. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit more and then I'll put the second coat on. If you get glaze um, around the rim where you don't want it, so I'm, I think I am going to put the cactus green up here, um, then you can just sponge it off with a damp sponge to tidy up your edges. I'm actually not that worried about having this go over because I'm going to put the cactus green on top of it to try and get some blend going on. All right, I think that's dry enough. I'll go in and start with my second coat. Okay, I need to let that dry now again. I think I'm going to put some of this blue oyster onto the handle, just across the top here, down the outside. It'll help blend um, the inside to the outside so it'll all uh, look like one piece. longer for the inside to dry. It takes a bit longer after the second coat to dry before you can apply the third. Okay, I'm going to go in and do the third coat now. It's still not completely dry, but it's um, touch dry everywhere, so that's there's no glaze coming off on my fingers, so we should be good to go. 
The reason we let things dry in between layers is so that when we apply the next layer it goes on top and doesn't just move around um, the layer that's already there. It helps make sure you get nice consistent coats. My next colour I'm going to go with is the Enzian, so the dark blue gets started a bit then. And I'm going to put this down the bottom. I'm going to leave um, a little bit of bare clay at the bottom because I know that these glazes run. Um, and I don't want them to run off the bottom of the mug. So what I've done with this one is I've put two coats on the full area that I'm going to cover with this glaze and then I've put a third coat as a rim, um, a ring just around the middle section and the reason I've done this is because I don't want it too heavy on the glaze at the bottom to try and stop it from running and I don't want it too heavy on the glaze on the top because I'm going to layer it up. So um, if I put three coats of this glaze and then three coats of another glaze, I've got six coats and that can make a lot of glaze that's got to go somewhere and makes it much more likely to run off the bottom of the mug. I say the other thing with glazes when you're layering them up is there is the possibility that one of the ingredients in one of the glazes mixing with the ingredients of a second glaze will actually make the resulting mix even runnier. So you do have to be careful and it's worth experimenting a bit. I do this on my mugs because I make the mugs for fun. Um, so I don't mind if they, uh, they don't turn out. Okay. So my next colour is going to be the orange that I'm going to put on the top. Okay, when you're picking your brush, you obviously want a brush that can cover um, the area that you're working with um, reasonably quickly. Um, with the amount of accuracy that you need for what you're doing. Um, but the other thing to think about is how it holds the glaze. So you can get some nice kind of mop brushes that hold a lot of glaze. But I find for doing something like this, they actually hold too much um, glaze and some glazes it doesn't work very well with it like these ones that go dry really quickly and powdery So I'm going to do my handle in this orange as well.
The bottom of my handle here actually touches uh, the table when the mug is sat down, so I can't glaze that area. So I've got to be careful that I keep the glaze just on the sections a little bit away from the table. The other thing with layering your glazes, of course, is that you don't have to worry about being so neat. Um, because I'm looking for the glazes to interact and react with each other. But I'm quite happy where they touch. You can see how fast this is uh, drying off. I can go straight in with my second coat. Now this orange can be quite temperamental. It sometimes goes beautifully orange and other times I get a kind of burnt effect. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's going to do the lovely orange for this. Although I'm not going to be too upset if it does the other because um, both ways makes an interesting glaze. But I'd really like the orange colour to complement the blue if I can get it. I'm going to leave a band of just orange around the top, so I'm going to put a third coat up the top here. left just two coats there because I'm going to now put the smoky Merlot across those two sections. So where I've got two coats of the Enzian and two coats of the Orange, it's going to be covered with smoky Merlot. quite like the idea of some of this green dropping down into the inside edge of the mug so I'm just going to add some further down widen up the green edge on the inside to dry a little bit before the next coat together. Yeah. Again I'm being a little bit impatient but I think it's dry enough. I'll go in with the next coat. Here we go. 
Now I've done those quite thick layers around the rim there, plus it's got the um, blue oyster glaze underneath. So I'm going to leave that one at two coats. Okay, so the last one to go on is the blue hydrangea. Now, this is a pot that's almost empty. And this works really well for what I want here because what I'm after is the crystals and they tend to settle towards the bottom of the pot of glaze. So I can just take this and pop it where I want the kind of sparkly, starry effect. Now I'm not worried how much of the actual glaze colour goes down because I'm not so worried about that. I just want the crystals. So I need to make sure I'm getting quite a few of the crystals. You can see the gritty texture in the glaze. Those are the crystals. I'm right about this one. I think the bigger crystals are the white colour and the smaller ones are the kind of greeny yellow colour. Now that's all the colours that I'm going to put on the mug. I'm just going to sponge around the bottom to tidy up this space here. As you can see I've gone a bit low in places so I'm going to just go around with the sponge and take that back to an even height all the way around. Um, and then it's going to go in the kiln. Okay, so this is the finished mug and I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out, although it has surprised me a little bit. Um, there's very little of the smoky Merlot colour going on here. All of the crystals and the colour from the blue hydrangea have become much more predominant. Um, so, so that's made an interesting difference to what I was expecting. Um, but the way the other colours have worked um, is quite lovely. Um, the orange has gone a bit to the burnt effect. Um, you can see there's a little bit of the dark with the, a bit of crawling and some pinholing going on there. Um, but you can see where it's, where it's gone in places. It's quite lovely what that orange can do um, under the handle. Uh, how well you can see under there is quite quite lovely um, and then on the inside the green on the top has come up lovely and it's just gone down and blended beautifully with the blue oyster on the inside there um, so overall I'm actually really happy with this mug um, and and trying out the new colors and mixture of colors um, it's also a good size. I can get my hand in there quite nicely. And I do, I quite like big mugs um, for my drinks. So for me, this is lovely. Um, yeah, um, so there we go. All finished. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed um, the video and I will see you on the next one.